Okay, so today I'm going to do a little help with um, stress strain problems. Now, yesterday I had for snow day, um, you really should uh, go through, and if you haven't yet, before you do this video, go through and watch some, watch these. These are good, really helpful overall idea on the stress strain calculations which can be hard just because of all the equations you can use. So um, I'm going to do a couple calculations and you're going to finish them up on your own. So let's jump over to that. So a couple things. This sheet that looks like this, this is all the problems. Now it has some examples and a lot of definitions. You'll want to know those, those terms and those symbols, modulus of elasticity and all these symbols so when you see them in the equations this has a lot of the equations too um, then you can do it and we're going to do the five step problem solving so really there's ten problems but there's not enough room on here and I wanted you to get used to the five step system so on here this page is where you do all your work and you keep this handy because it has two sides and it has all our all our formulas up. there's some front some on the back all that good stuff. So let's attack problem number one together. Okay, and as I read problem number one, I want to notice, you know, highlight whatever is important. So I have a weight of 18,000 pounds supported on a rectangular base plate that is nine inches wide and two feet long. Now this is something to watch out for right away. Notice the difference in those um, I probably want to turn that into 24 inches before I even move on. So always be careful to watch your units. That's why I'm pretty crazy about making sure you put it in there. So we have a rectangular base plate, 9 by 24 inches. All right. And the base is on a concrete slab. Determine the stress that the base plate exerts on the concrete slab. So I see the word stress, and it freaks me out. Not really. And we want pounds per inches squared and then pounds per feet squared. Oh, okay, so we're going to have to use the inches first and then the second time we do it, we'll turn that into feet. That's not a big deal. That's like doing the problem a separate time. So over here, I want to put my knowns. I know my force. When I read that um, weight of 18,000 pounds, I know my force. And then the other stuff I know is length and width, which lead me to area. So length is 24 inches and width is 9 inches. We'll come back later and do it in feet later. Um, so that means my area that I'm dealing with is 24 by 9. So I got 24 inches times 9 inches and on your calculator you get 216 inches squared. Okay, so that's my area. So why am I even doing that? Well, if you look at your formula sheet, um, the formula for stress um, is P, which is force over area. Um, I wonder if it's on this side too. Um, yeah, force. See, so it has um, P over area. So we got our stress. Here we go. There's our stress. So we got our pounds over inches squared. Okay. So our equation is going to be a stress, which is going to be the simple sigma equals force over area. Okay. And then my unknowns, I just don't know stress. I think I know everything else. We have force and we have area. So we're going to go ahead and substitute and solve. So we've got stress equals F over A. Stress equals my force is 18,000 pounds over um, 216 inches squared. I should have drew a picture. We got this, this uh, base. I don't know how thick it is. But we got this base that's 24 inches by 9 inches and there's some sort of weight on it, 18,000 pounds, and it's sitting on some sort of concrete slab. Okay, not a great picture. These pictures are never that interesting. 
And then with our calculator, we're going to do 18,000 divided by 260, which is 83.3 repeating, and that's pounds per square inch. So you could do pounds over inches squared or do PSI. So that's one of my answers. Um, the other one, this is A. Okay, so that's PSI. Oops, I should show that. The other one is just for part B, you're going to do the same thing, but instead of uh, 24 inches, you're going to write 2 feet. Instead of 9 inches, you're going to say that's 0.75 of a foot, because you could do 9 divided by 12. And all that changes is your area. Right? We got 2 feet times 0.75 feet equals uh, 1.5 feet squared. Right? So over here, I'd like you to mark your work. You know, for part B, I'm doing, you still write your formula. I want you to always write your formula and then substitute in. But now we have 1.5 feet squared. And then sigma is going to be whatever that divides out to be, which is a nice even 12,000 pounds per square foot. Okay. So part B was 12,000 uh, pounds per foot squared. Okay, not bad, right? So number one was a pretty straightforward problem. Let's jump down to number five um, because I wanted one with different formulas. The stress formula is F over A. Um, that's pretty easy, or P over A. This one, um, I have a 35 foot long solid steel rod subjected to a load of 8,000 pounds. That's good. That's good to know. Um, so you're, you're hanging an 8,000 pound force on a 35 foot steel rod. It causes the rod to stretch a certain amount of inches. So not much, but modulus of elasticity is 30,000 PSI. So that's a big capital E. This one's going to be my force, right? And this is my original length. So when I read through here, um, determine the diameter of the rod. Okay, that's a different question. So I need to find something that involves E and something that involves your length. Okay, so when you're going through your formulas, you're like, all right, I don't want that E. I want like big, big E down here. Modulus of elasticity is force. Remember, P could be an F. You know, sometimes we use an F, sometimes we use a P. Um, force times original length over area original times this thing. Now remember, that weird um, delta is for elongation. So you're kind of um, combining formulas. You're like, okay, that formula comes from change in length. Okay. Um, so I'm going to use this formula. This one looks like the best one. I just hunted for one that had original length and a capital E. There's not many others with the capital E, in it, right? I'm trying to see. Oh, it's kind of this one here. We're doing this one, except in a different solve for a different variable. Here's one. E equals force times length over area times stretch. Or you could just do stress over strain which is kind of cool. Okay, so let's check this out, unless there's a better one. No. Yeah, there's not a better one. That's original length. Okay, so I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to write down my knowns from the other page. The things I know are original length is 35 feet. Oh, wait. Sometimes the problem tells you what it wants. Diameter. Hmm. Let's turn that into inches, only because, see how the stretch is in inches? I want things to match. So 35 feet, always make your stuff match, especially because this is PSI, so pounds per square inch. I have to make things inches. So I'm going to take 35 times 12 is 420 inches. So my, my original length is actually 420 inches. Okay, so that's one thing I know. Um, my unknown is area for my formula, or really diameter. 
Okay, I don't know the diameter, that's what I'm searching for. And the reason I wrote area is if you look at this formula, the formula is modulus of elasticity, so capital E equals force times length original over area times elongation, which is delta. It's a weird little symbol. Okay, so in here I know the delta. I know delta is the amount of stretch. So it tells me in the problem that the elongation or stretch is 0.226 or 0.266 inches. Um, I also have my force is 8,000. So I want to make sure my stuff matches. Oh, I know capital E modulus of elasticity is 30 million PSI. So I have to make things match. Pounds have to match pounds, square inches. These both have to be inches. So now um, if I'm going to draw it, we have a rod that we don't know how what the diameter of the rod is. But I do know I have a force pulling down of 8,000 pounds, and it stretches 0.266 inches, so it's stretching that way. And its original length is 35 feet, or 420 inches. Okay, so that's my pictures. These are never two crazy pictures. Um, substitute install. So I got this is my formula, so always write the formula originally. It's force times length original over area times stretch or delta. Okay, so I have 30 million. Use commas, use PSI, pounds per square inch, equals 8,000 pounds times length original, use the 420 inches. So now I have pounds times inches on top. And on bottom, I have an area I don't know, because I don't know the diameter. I can't do pi r squared. It's a circle. I can't do pi r squared unless I know on the other thing. And then here on bottom, I have, um, what is this? Um, a 0.266 inches. So those inches will cancel those inches. I'll do the old Western switcheroo here. Okay, so area is going to equal 8,000 pounds times 420 inches. Remember, when the thing you care about is in bottom, you switch it. And I'm just switching the A with the other side. Okay, you're allowed to leave that 0.266 inches. This is a good math trick to learn. And 30 million PSI. Oh, wait, inches went away. Okay, so my pounds will cancel with pounds. You'll have square inches in the end because you're one over square inches. So my area is going to be a certain amount of inches squared. Let me get the calculator and do that real quick. All right, so I did uh, 8,000 times, um, times 420, and I did 30 million times 0.266, and I got these numbers. Write them down. And then you'll have less likely to make an error. My area came out to be 0.421 inches squared. Now, that's not my diameter. I'm close. I got the area of the cross section, which is a circle. And just remember, maybe I ran out of room here, but area equals pi r squared. So if 0.421 inches squared equals pi times radius squared, I'm going to divide by pi and then square root both sides. Kind of do that in one step here, let me pause it. So yeah, I did, I divided by pi and then I took the square root and I get 0.366, but that's radius, so you need to double that number for diameter. And you get, um, the diameter is 0.732 inches. All right, so that was that problem. It used a different formula. Hopefully that made sense with all the substituting and all that stuff. Keep trying on those problems, and um, yeah, you got you only have eight more to do.